What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and layout tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna use our house model and we're gonna create some interior elevation views inside of your model. So if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth training on architectural modeling and SketchUp, specifically for creating plans and layout, make sure to check out my course, the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture. Um, that course is gonna teach you step-by-step um, -step exactly how to create your models and also your plans inside of SketchUp and layout, including some example files you can download and you can learn from as well. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to check that out at the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in last week's video, we talked about how to create floor plans for my models. So you can see how I've gone through and I've created floor plans um, for both my level one and my level two. We also talked about how to export that into layout. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about how to create different kinds of views, specifically elevation views inside of your models. And so if you remember, what we've done up to this point is we've used our section planes, which I'm gonna turn those on real quick, in order to take cuts through our walls in order to create our our plan view um, straight up and down so um, so that we can see like our door frames and other things like that well in this situation if you wanted to you could come in here and add more section planes in order to set up like an elevation view so if you wanted to you could take a cut through your wall right here and create like a vertical section plane you can see how I can move that in order to kind of get different results or kind of whatever it is I'm looking for and then I could set up a front view so it's gonna be one of these guys there we go so we could set up a front view right here using parallel projection. Then we could zoom in kind of like this. You can see how that's giving us a cut through our sideways cabinets. We can fix that in layout, um, but this is one way that we could do this. However, the problem with this is this gets really messy, right? So if you create like 40 different section planes inside of your building to create your different elevations, things just start getting really crowded. And so what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a little tip or a little trick um, that uses the uh, parallel projection viewport in order to, or the parallel projection camera style in order to simulate an elevation view without actually taking that cut across our building. And so the way that's going to work is we're going to start by going up to camera and putting our camera in parallel projection. This is going to be really important. If you don't do this, this isn't going to work. So we're gonna put our camera into parallel projection view. And then instead of selecting the section plane view, what we wanna do is we wanna go into our first person camera tools over here and we wanna use the position camera tool. And so you can find this in the large tool set, which you can activate by right clicking on here and clicking on large tool set. I believe you can also find it in the, uh, let's see, I think in the camera tools as well. So if you want to turn on camera tools, the position camera tool is in here as well. And so what we want to do is this tool allows us to pick a point and then set the direction that our camera is going to face based on that point. Well, what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to click and drag this based on a point so that it gives us a forward facing view. Um, from where we want our camera to see this elevation view. And so what that's gonna do if you're in parallel projection view is that's going to cut out everything behind your camera. Meaning that this is using our camera visibility right now to give us a section cut view or a view into our elevation without actually making us add a section cut. And so you have to be a little bit careful where you place your camera. So for example, if I go into parallel projection view again, and then I activate this tool and I click and drag this way, but I've got my camera back behind the end of this island. And then I drag this along the green axis and let up. What that's gonna do is that's gonna block part of my view with this uh, central island right here, which is not what we want. So what we need to do is we just need to make sure that when we do this, um, we set our camera beyond anything that might block that view, and then we just click and drag. And this works in any direction. Um, so for example, if I was to click and drag this other way, maybe starting like right here, I could click and drag along the red axis, and that's gonna give me a clipped elevation view of my cabinets right here. But again, kind of, kind of a little bit weird right here with the way this is being shown. You do have to be a little bit careful when you do this. Notice how this is now being clipped out. So um, if you ever like rotate out of that view, um, you need to make sure to go back to a perspective view in order to reset your camera clipping. But what I wanna do is I wanna use this in order to create my elevation. So we're gonna click to activate this tool. 
we're going to click and drag basically right here and drag forward along the green axis and notice how when I did this I was in perspective view so it didn't work so go to parallel projection view click and drag and then we're just going to take this view and we're just going to save it and if you want to you can go into your styles and select that construction documentation style that we'd used before you should be able to find that in your in model um, but use your style to set this up however you want it to look inside of layout so now we can just add a view and I'm just going to move this to the right I don't know that I can drag it I think I might be able to drag it if I use the scenes toolbar over here in the tray but for right now we'll just rename this EL kitchen one so now I have a kitchen elevation so now I have a floor plan view another floor plan view and then a kitchen view and that's going to be my kitchen one and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a couple more views really quick um, just so we can bring multiple views into layout um, so I'm probably going to speed this up when I do this All right, so now I've added all of these views and I want to take them over into layout. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by saving my model. So I'm going to do a file. And I'm going to do a save as. You'll probably just do a file save. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's open up layout. And so in this situation, I'm just going to do a file send to layout. You could also just open layout and import this as a viewport. But I'm going to click on send to layout and that's going to open up layout so that I can create a plan. And so when this first opens up, it's going to ask us to select a template. So I'm going to select one of my templates. If you don't have any in here, you can create a title or you can use one of these title block templates and kind of adjust that. I would recommend if you create a lot of plans, get your own template made in here so that you can just base all of your plans on that. Um, if you guys are interested, I can make a video about creating templates, but leave a comment down below and let me know. So we're going to go in here into my templates and I have an architectural D template that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to bring that in. And that's basically going to be an architectural D sheet that's blank that has my information on the sides of the page. So you can see how what this did is this brought this view in based on um, the view that I had selected um, when I clicked on send to layout. And so what that's done is that's brought in one viewport on my page. So what I want to do is I want to set this up so I have multiple viewports on my page. So the way that I want to do that, and I want to point out that you want to make sure that you're putting things on the right layers. So for me, for example, I'm going to create a layer and I'm just going to call this elevation view or elevation viewport. And that's going to be the layer that I'm going to put all of my elevations on. That's going to be important a little bit later when we start working with dimensions and annotations and stuff. But I want to create a layer for those. And I just want to move this to my elevation viewport layer. Now, let's go in and let's set our scale. And so we're going to set our scale by going up into our SketchUp model settings. And we're just going to adjust this. And I want this to have a much uh, smaller scale because I want this to be a lower image. So I'm going to say maybe we'll start with 3 quarters of an inch and see how that looks on my sheet. So we can go ahead and work with that for right now. And so right now, all I really want to do is I want to show the kitchen portion of this plan. And so the way that I want to do that is I want to resize this, but then I also want to clip out any extra that's in here. So we can do that using a clipping plane. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this so that this viewport isn't as big. I'm going to make sure to leave this preserve scale on resize checked. And I'm just going to scale this over. And I'm going to scale this down so that all I really have is my viewport right here. Then I'm going to move this up so that it kind of sits in the corner right here. And so what I want to do is I'm going to basically create four different viewports on this page with my four different elevations that I created. So I'm going to start by making a copy of this before I do any kind of clipping. So the way that you can do that is you can either do a control C and then a control V to copy paste it. Or you can also just hold the control key and click and drag this. If you click and drag this, what it's going to do is it's going to duplicate your current viewport. So now I have two viewports in here. Well, then I'm just going to do a shift click to select both of these. I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to drag these down so that I now have four viewports. And so these four viewports, I'm going to change the view that each one of these is referencing so that I have four different elevations on this page. 
And so the easiest way to do that is you can just right click on this and you can scroll down to scenes and you can see how this scenes has all of the different scenes that we've created inside of our view, assuming that we have an up-to-date reference for our model. So I'm just going to select Kitchen 3 for this one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select Kitchen 2 for this one. And I'm going to select Kitchen 1 for this one. So now I have all four of my elevations in this scene. And so they all preserve, they all kept the same scale. So that's not really an issue. And I can come in here and I can uh, adjust them or align them really easily just by clicking and dragging. Then you can also select a viewport and you can nudge things up and down by tapping up, down, left, and right on your arrow key. You can also hold the shift key and nudge up and down left and right using the arrows um, with a larger, um, it basically moves a larger distance um, when you do that. But now what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna clip out some of this extra stuff, right? So this is showing my wall right here. That's fine, but what I don't want it to show is the little bit of stair that's up here or this piece right here. And so what we can do in order to get rid of that is we can use what's known as clipping. And so what clipping does is clipping allows you to draw an image and then use it as a clipping mask. Meaning anything that's under the clipping mask, you keep anything that you don't have under the clipping mask gets hidden inside of your view. So the way this would work is we would just draw a rectangle and it's gonna be really simple in this case. I'm just gonna click and drag a rectangle down to this corner right here. And so notice that this didn't have fill turned on. If I was to go into my shape style and click on fill with that selected, then it would have the fill turned on. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna select that rectangle and I wanna do a shift click to also select my viewport. Well, when I do that and go up to my edit, you wanna click on the button for create clipping mask. And so when you create a clipping mask, you can see how what this did is this basically removed or hid everything that was not under the rectangle that I drew right here. If you ever wanna get rid of that, you can just right click on this and click on release clipping mask. So for example, if I wanted to come in here and adjust this down a little bit, then I could come back in and you can also right click and click on create clipping mask. So you can use this in order to clip out anything you don't want. So for example, down here, um, let's say, let's say, and you wouldn't necessarily want to do this, but let's say you only wanted to show this island in this elevation. Well, what you could do is you could use the line tool and you could draw a shape over top of this. Well, then you could select your rectangle or your shape that you drew as well as your view and right click and create a clipping mask. And you could create only a view of your island. So you could label this something like island elevation or something like that if you wanted to do that. So you can use a clipping mask in order to only show the things that you want to inside of layout. And so now that we have these views in here, what we would do is we would just label them. And so I would label them, for example, I would make sure to put this on my annotations layer. So you wanna make sure that whatever layer you put your uh, annotations on is above the layer that your viewports is on um, because these stack kind of like layers do in Photoshop in the sense that the stuff that's on the top is going to show above the things that are on the bottom in this stack. But for this one, I would just um, either create something new or I could also go into my scrapbooks. So scrapbooks are really helpful for um, creating things like title blocks and other things like that um, without, and then saving them so that you don't have to do this over and over again. So for example, for this one, I could click on title block plane and maybe I think it's drawing references. Well, under drawing references, you can see how there's already a pre-built label in here that I can drag in and I can use. And again, notice that I'm putting this on my annotations layer so that means later I can lock my annotations layer and these won't move around on me anymore. So for this one, for example, we'll call this kitchen elevation one. I think this should actually be kitchen elevation four. 
And you can make a note in here that this is 3 quarters of an inch equals 1 foot 0 inches. You can make a note to your scale. And then you could hold the control key and drag in order to quickly create a copy. And so you can see how you can use this in order to add those labels to your drawings really quickly inside of layout. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you're looking for more in-depth training on how to create plans in layout, make sure to check out the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course at the link in the notes down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.